What is going on guys, it's Amit, you're watching Dev Dreamer, and welcome to lesson number 14 in JavaScript. In this lesson, we're going to learn all about template literals. If you enjoy the content, don't forget to like and subscribe down below and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Okay, so welcome back to lesson number 14. In the last few lessons, we've learned all about how to create strings using double quotes and single quotes. But I also mentioned that there is a more modern way of writing strings called template literals. This is sometimes also called template strings. Now, these were introduced in a version of JavaScript called ES6. And basically, they introduce an easier and more readable way of injecting values into strings. And as you're gonna to come to see in this lesson, they are really, really powerful. So let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. So first then, I'm gonna say let title be assigned the value of, and we're going to be using backticks of course here, as we're looking at template literals. And this is going to be Sonic the Hedgehog. We're going to say let platform be assigned the value of Sega. And finally, let's say let year be assigned the value of 1991. And of course, this is a number. So previously then, if we wanted to use these variables to create a string, we would do something like this. Let info we sign the value of title plus then we're going to say was released so Sonic the Hedgehog was released make sure we put a space there by then a space at the end as well plus platform plus in the year plus year and then finally plus a full stop at the end so if we log this to the console so console.log info we get the sentence, Sonic the Hedgehog was released by Sega in the year 1991. And of course, we looked at concatenating strings like this in the previous lesson. So how can we do the same thing using template literals? Well, we can simply say, let info be assigned the value of, and now here we use backticks like so. And now inside our template literal, we can use variables by simply saying dollar sign, curly braces, and then the name of our variable. So we're gonna say title, and now here's where the real magic happens. We don't need to use plus inside template literals. We can just go ahead and type as we normally would type. So I'm gonna say was released by space, and then the next variable. Again, we don't need to use a plus symbol here. So we can say dollar sign, curly braces, and then platform in the year. Again, to use a variable, dollar sign, curly braces, year, and then end this with a full stop. Let's just go ahead and change this to info2 because we'll get an error because we've declared it twice there. So let's go ahead and save. Change this to info2 first. Save. And as you can see, we get the same thing here for info2. Son of the Hedgehog was released by Sega in the year 1991. Now, how much easier was it writing this out than it was writing this out? Okay, we don't need to mess around with the plus symbol and making sure we've got spaces in between. We can simply write as normal and then simply substitute this information here with dollar sign, curly braces, and then the name of the variable inside. So as you can see then, the modern way of writing strings with template literals is a lot more cleaner. We don't have to use a bunch of plus symbols scattered all over the place. And it's just so much easier to read. We don't need to think about where one phrase begins and another ends. It's just easy to read like a regular sentence. Now, to be clear, you don't need to necessarily declare your strings up here as template literals. Okay, so we use template literal here and template literal over here. They could be double quotes or single quotes if you want, and this will still work. The advantage of using template literals comes into play when you want to concatenate strings together. Now, another advantage of using template literals is multi-line strings. To do this previously, we would have to use a special character slash n. So let's just go ahead and paste this in. Let's just comment this out for now. And let's change this to info. So let's console log this. Okay, so here what we've done then is we've said title, which is Son of the Hedgehog. Then we've used this special slash n character here, which puts our sentence onto a new line, was released by Sega, and then slash n again for a new line in the year 1991. Now to achieve the same thing using template literals, it's a lot easier. So let's go ahead and uncomment this and check this out guys. All we need to do to put our sentence on a new line is simply, well, put our sentence on a new line like so. And now if you save this, let's just change this to info2. Just gonna go ahead and comment this out for now. Let's save this. And we get the exact same thing, but in a much quicker and much cleaner way, right? It's much easier to look at this and see visually what's going on as opposed to all this. So as you can see, once again, template literals provide us with a much cleaner and easier way to achieve multi-line strings. There's no confusing opening and closing quotation marks, plus symbols and the slash n characters. Now, another advantage of using template literals is that template literals also make embedding expressions a lot easier. For example, let's say let num1 be assigned the value of 10 and let num2 be assigned the value of 5. 
And then down here, I'm going to say let sum be assigned the value of, let's use our backticks, and we're going to say the total is dollar sign curly braces. And inside here, we can just say num1 plus num2. Let's console.log sum. The total is 15. So as you can see then guys, using template literals has several advantages. And as we progress through the series, you'll see me using template literals when we need to concatenate strings. It is still important for you to know how to do this in the old way though, which is why we covered it in the previous lesson, because not everyone is going to be using template literals. But as we've learned in this lesson, you should be using them as much as you can because of all the advantages that come with them. Okay, so that's all about template literals. Let's go ahead and summarize this lesson. So we can use template literals to create strings by surrounding our text with backticks. By using template literals, we can pull information in from variables with ease and make our code look a lot more readable. We can create multi-line strings with ease by simply starting on a new line. And finally, template literals make embedding expressions a lot more easier. So task time, let's go ahead and look at your tasks for this lesson. For the first task, I want you to create three variables called first name, course and channel, and then assign the value your name to name, JavaScript to course and dev dreamer to channel. And for the second task, I want you to create another variable called info and then use template literals to construct the sentence. For example, John is learning JavaScript with dev dreamer. So as always, go ahead and pause the video, try these out. And when we come back, we'll take a look at the answers. So how'd you get on then? Let's see. So for the first task, then we need to create three variables. So we're going to say let first name, be assigned the value of, and then you put your name in here. Let course be assigned the value of JavaScript. And finally, let channel be assigned the value of dev dreamer. Okay, for task two, create another variable called info and then use template literals to construct the sentence. So we're going to say let info be assigned the value of, we're going to use template literals. And remember to pull variable values in, we simply say dollar sign and then curly braces and then the name of our variable. So I'm going to say first name and it's going to be is learning JavaScript, which is our course variable. So dollar sign course with dev dreamer. So dollar sign curly braces. That was our channel variable. So that's it. Let's go ahead and add a full stop and console log this. Perfect. In the console, we get Amit is learning JavaScript with dev dreamer. So well done on getting those right. In the next lesson, we're going to be capping off our study on strings by looking at the different string methods that we can use. And as you'll see, these are going to be very useful in a lot of different projects that you complete. And talking about projects, throughout this series, we're going to be creating little projects along the way to solidify and put into practice what we've been learning. So if you'd like to see that and you find these videos helpful, please do like and subscribe down below. Don't forget to click the bell as well and choose all notifications so you never miss an update. Get practicing and I'll see you on the next one.